The world is my oyster. William Shakespeare's quote has a literal meaning for Edward Kong, Malaysia's first pearl farmer. For 15 years, Edward has been quietly cultivating precious South Sea pearls on a remote island in Sabah. These unpolluted waters near the diving paradise of Sipadan Island are a fitting birthplace for the beautiful pearls Edward has labored to cultivate. We are here at Timbun Mata. This beautiful island off the coast of Sabah is the base for Edward Kong's pearl farming business. We are standing right now at the watchtower which overlooks all of his operations out at sea. At his invitation, let's take a look to see how Edward is farming his pearls. Pearl farming is a time and financially consuming industry that not many people would want to invest in. The risks are high and harvests are in nature's hands. The farm is also open to a constant threat of piracy. So what has compelled Edward to invest millions of dollars and 15 years of his life here? Uh, my father started this company in 1993 and in 1994 this company ran into some financial and technical and security problems. So in 1994 April, I joined this company to help him out. So from there, I have been in this company for the last 15 years. Cultured pearls are genuine pearls formed inside a living oyster. After years of trial and error in research, Edward finally developed his own secret technique. In 1994, when the company had problems, so I get the help from friends from Australia. He support me financially and technically. I also spend quite a lot of money to get uh, technical and uh, support from Japanese technicians. Since 2000, I do my own research and developments and has been very successful. And today I do not need any more uh, foreign technical support anymore. The crucial first step in cultivating pearls is the nucleation process. Basically, we need only a few pairs of uh, male and female uh, mature oyster. From there, we select some uh, good characteristic from the oyster, then we do the, the, the spawning. So after the spawning, we have a lot of lawas. Maybe we can have a few hundred thousands from few pairs of uh, parents oyster. From there, we grow the lava to baby oyster. And then at the age of maybe 15 months, we can do the seeding operations. A skilled grafter makes a tiny surgical incision to implant a small piece of mental tissue from a donor oyster and a nucleus, which is a tiny shell bead harvested from the Mississippi River in the United States. The nucleus acts as an irritant for the oyster to coat it over with smooth layers of nacre. Over time, the growing pearls will be completely covered with the shimmering nacre. After the nucleation process, Edward's workers hang the oysters and quickly return them to the ocean. The oysters will be carefully monitored over two to four years of their growth. For the first 45 days, the nucleated oysters are placed in shallow waters to help them recover. They are then transferred to semi-open waters around 30 meters deep for three months. After that, they are placed in open waters about 70 meters deep for its plankton-rich nutritional values. And all the while, workers have to haul them up for cleaning. It's a laborious process. Edward's 50 workers tend to the oysters from dawn to dusk. They work quietly and efficiently. For them, it's all in a day's work. They are all native Bajau sea folk. Many have weathered with Edward through the years. Kerja ini memang sudah satu kebajikan hidup kita. Kita kena kerja dengan ikhlas, jujur, setia, baru sonok. To Edward, their loyalty is priceless and their work the most vital part of his operations. I think running a pearl farm, you have to treat the workers really well because they are the ones who decide whether you success or fail. Harvesting time is the most anticipated moment for everyone. Edward's harvesting station on Silumpat Selatan Island is the focal point to see if all the hard work has paid off. I am holding a perfectly round, intense, golden yellow South Sea Pearl. It is 15 millimeters in diameter and worth over 10,000 ringgit. Let's find out from Edward why this pearl is so valuable. So South Sea Pearl uh, is one of the most rare pearls in the world. It's uh, maybe three pieces in 1,000 pieces of uh, pearl, uh, South Sea Pearl. 
So reality is is the make it uh, quite expensive. Madrid oysters are brought in fresh from the sea. They are not pretty, but within their shells lay the fruit of a four-year-long labor. The workers deftly split open the oysters to reveal what's inside. The pearls come in different colors, shapes, and sizes. The uniqueness of each pearl defines its value. To value a pearl, uh, the first thing is the size. The pearls uh, I'm producing in this farm is uh, above uh, 10 mm uh, until maybe 18 mm. Every millimeters uh, up, the price uh, probably is about double. And then after the size, we, we value the pearls from shape. The most expensive uh, is round, perfect round pearls. After that, at the moment, it's baroque pearls. And also some drop pearls, means drop shape and then circle, circle pearls. After the shape, we uh, value from uh, the luster, whether the luster is very shiny, uh, and then till, uh, until dull. And after that, we have to value the pearls from the surface, whether it's a lot of dimples, until uh, the, the highest uh, quality is uh, flawless. Edward's buyers have recognized the beauty and premium quality of these pearls. Most of my uh, customer is uh, who really appreciate what is uh, genuine South Sea pearls. Uh, compared to in the market, maybe 90% of the pearls is uh, color treated and luster coated. So my main, my customer have to appreciate what is uh, genuine uh, real South Sea pearls. Through dealers, the pearls make their way into international jewelry houses and into the hands of the rich and famous. Next year, Edward will launch his own collection of South Sea Pearls jewelry in his private gallery in Kuala Lumpur. I have been exporting my pearls to Australia and Japan for many years without uh, any achievement be beside uh, in money terms. So I would like to have uh, some recognition. Uh, Malaysia can produce the best pearl in the world. For now, his beautiful pearls are sold at the Jindela KL Boutique in Staryl Gallery, Kuala Lumpur. When it comes to his pearls, Edward is uncompromising on quality. Imperfect pearls are cast into the sea after each harvest. The most important is, uh, I think, to maintain very good quality pearls. I don't use uh, the low grades or reject pearls to do treatments or enhancing. I only use uh, my best quality pearls uh, to sell it to my customer. As symbols of wisdom, wealth and natural beauty, pearls will continue to be perfect gifts of nature. A precious pearl is created through the process of time, pain and labour. Edward's labour certainly mirrors the way a pearl is formed. Chin Muyen, The Star, Malaysia.